Hi, this is Martin Meyer from Foundry and in today's Workflow Wednesday session we will have a look at the bit of Python that will allow you to load data from external database. It can be any kind of database from any Google products to Excel sheet or a simple CSV which is a um, comma separated values data and then you will be able to process this inside of Nuke and generate scripts off of that data to automatically alter any properties within your script on either per short basis or customize it per client name. Uh, the options are endless so let's have a look at the way this can be done. So the first thing we need is some sort of data to iterate over and to generate the scripts from. For that I prepared a list of names quite a few names here and each of them will have their own script and it will be rendered automatically so we'll customize our scripts based on the name uh, that is coming from this csv file and another bit of data are random numbers um, that can be different age or really anything but to they're there to distinguish each separate user so we have uh, less repetition so when this is delivered over any social media for example um, each user gets their own customized little video. Okay, first thing, let's modify Nuke to be more useful for scripting. Let's just change the user interface. I'll erase whatever I have here. And uh, let's import a few modules that will come in handy. So the first one is the import CSV, which allows us to operate with the CSV data or work with the CSV data that we are importing into Nuke. The next one is the Nuke module itself that will allow us to actually build and alter our nodes inside of the script. OS module will allow us to operate with the uh, file paths and add things to file paths and search for directories. And random will allow us to randomly pick background for each video. Once our modules are imported, we can establish few variables. So let's point, uh, create a variable that will point into a working directory where everything resides where the input images are, where the scripts will be saved, uh, and also where our data lives. That's the main working path. Once the working path is established, I can go ahead and open the CSV file. So by merging the folder data with my working path by using the ospath.join from the OS module, and I'm opening the CSV data in a read mode. Then I push it to a my CSV variable, that will use the CSV reader to parse the CSV data. Now that we have the CSV loaded, I can iterate through each row by using the for loop for row in my CSV file, and I will print every row to see if everything is loading correctly. So when I execute this, it will load the data and print everything in the output window. And you can see getting all my names and all my values as lists. So now that I have my list, I would like to get the iteration in which the loop is currently in as well, so I can use it to name the comps later on. For that, we can use the enumerate function to use it. I can just place it in here. And then when I run this, I'll get the loop position or the iteration, which is right here. And then um, the name as the first component of the list, and then the age as the second component of the list. So if I would like to get the name components only, I can use the square brackets, get the first item in the tuple, which is these brackets are the tuple, and then the first component here will be also zero. So sorry, I would like to get the first one, which is the list, and then inside of it, the zero component, which is the name. So now when I run this, I'll get only the names printed. Great, so now let's assign these values to variables so we can reference them later on easier without typing the positions in the row tuple and array so what i'll do is just create a bunch of local variables which will be username that will be the name as we acquired it previously user age will be the first position uh, in the list and the count will be the actual count so when i do print this i'll get all three components that i can easily access so you can see i get zuzana or whatever the name the age and the position in the loop Excellent, so this is working. I would like to just add a few more variables that we can be using. One that I need to add is my location of the background images that is relative to the main working path. So I'm creating the background images path and I'm joining the working path here uh, with the in folder and then background images. So all of it kind of revolves from the working path or all the paths that I'll be using are relative to the main path here. 
Next thing that I would like to do is to add the time module or import the time so I can measure how long things are running. So I'll add the time. And before we start working on our main loop that will do majority of the work, I would like to do a little bit of housekeeping. So first, before we enter the loop, I will disable nukes undo because we might be potentially running over thousands of comps and I would like nuke not to remember any of this. Um, and then I'll start the time measurement right here. Then after the loop, when the loop stopped running, I would like to close the open CSV file right here. So let's just close the F, so F close. Then I would like to re-enable the undo, measure and print the results of the time. So let's copy these two paths. Let's paste them right here. And here I have a measuring the time or creating the end variable, which measures the time again. And then I'll print uh, the time when I subtract the end or start from the end. So I'll get the time in seconds. So let's try this and see how uh, long we, this is actually running. And you can see it was loaded in 1.63 seconds. Great, so this concludes the first part of the tutorial where we did the, all the prep work and we, have, we are loading our data and it's all ready for the main loop that will do the majority of the work. So hope you enjoyed it and thank you for watching.